Good afternoon, everyone. Now it's the tutorial time. In this tutorial, we will talk about some questions in homework form and give some examples on triple integrals and line integrals in vector field. Uh, we we are TAs from biomedical engineering. I'm Melissa. Uh, I also invite Nathan and Jiwan here to do some discussion. For homework four, we choose the question three, four, and five to discuss here today. Uh, since these questions are very typical questions, and uh, there may be some similar questions in your examination. So we discuss this here today. Jiwan and uh, Nathan will help to discuss question 3 and 5. Since they are graders of these questions, they are very familiar with it and uh, can uh, tell you some uh, reminders about these questions. Okay, I'm going to explain the question number three that uh, we're supposed to figure out how to solve the problems of differentiation. So um, there is a radius, a right circular cone, and the radius changes from 10 to 10.2 cm, and the height changed from 1 meter to 0.99 meters. So uh, at this question three, you are supposed to find approximate changes in volume, and so as the percentage change of such volume change compared to the original volumes. So let's dig in. So you need first you need to set a, a formula for the volume, and the volume formula is one third pi r square times height and you are supposed to differentiate this function into two different factors that radius and height so and then if you uh, add together then it will be two third pi r h dr and one third pi r square dh and then if you apply the r is 10 and the delta r is 0 0.2 and the height is height used to be one meter so that is 100, 100 cm and the delta h is going to be one minus one cm and then if you apply all those all together then it will the answer will be 100 pi uh, cubic centimeters and then the percentage of such change is um, delta v over original v and times 100 percent and then that will be three percent overall so like most of you guys missed the uh, 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 make it equal in a unit and also uh, you just didn't know how to sometimes people forget to use the volume formula so i hope this could help now let's move on to question four we have y equals to f of u and u equals to g of a and b then we need to draw a tree diagram and find the a partial square y and the partial a square over partial a square. To find the secondary uh, derivative, we need to firstly find the first derivative. Since y is a function of u and u is a function of a and b, then we get this tree diagram. Uh, a and B are two independents. U is the interme intermediate and Y is the dependent. Then uh, along this line, we can get the first uh, derivative uh, 
partial y over partial a equals to dy over du times partial u over partial a. So please be noted that since uh, uh, y is a function of u, u is the uh, only variable, so we can use d. But for uh, for u is a function of a and b, so we need to use a partial here. Then we can plug this uh, first derivative into the uh, secondary derivative. Uh, then we can uh, uh, we can separate the, the this into two parts. The first part is uh, dy over du times uh, partial u squared over partial a squared. Then the second part is uh, uh, partial partial u over partial a times uh, partial dy over du over partial a. So uh, for this, for the second part, we also need to draw a tree diagram to find the secondary uh, derivative. Then we, we have uh, du over dy over du. Then it's a function of u. u is also a function of a and b. Then we can uh, get this. Then, uh, then we can finally get the uh, result. So in this uh, in this question, we need to note that uh, uh, when we can use dy over dx and uh, when we need to use partial y uh, over partial x. And we, you should also be careful of the notations you use. And and uh, for uh, ob obtaining the secondary derivative, you, you should show sufficient amount of steps based on the tree diagram drawn, which means uh, we need draw the uh, two tree diagrams. So about the solution of the question five, so we have to know several problems we have to tackle. So first of all, we have to find all the local extremes of these given functions and also determine the nature of each of these critical points and using the second derivative test. So, and also if the test is inconclusive, you have to give explanation that can help to determine the nature of the critical point. So first of all, we have to know um, the nature what is the local extreme or something like that? So, so first of all, the local extreme uh, the, the for the given function, you will have seven several um, uh, specific point in the extrema, and that is the local maxima, local min, uh, local minimum, and the global minimum and the global maximum. So, uh, bear in mind you have to when you determine the nature of the function, you have to think it carefully and the nature of the and also one very interest uh, very important thing is uh, besides this local minimum and the local maximum you will also have this called the settle point which is uh, the the, the um, slope of the orthogonal uh, pathway is non zero but it's not a local minimum okay we we'll go back so about the first question, so um, first of all, you need to do the first uh, details in terms of x and y to give this function, these two functions. And because it's a extrema, so you can set these two uh, equals to zero and equals together, then you will get this x equals to y uh, crib. And then you uh, substitute to make it uh, substitute this one into the equation, either one equation to get this equation, and do the, and it is important to solve the nine polynomial equation in in this way. So many students, uh, they cannot get full marks in this question is because they um, 
perhaps they do this step and then they uh, jump immediately to, to this part. But um, we want you to also show uh, how to solve this um, uh, polynomial equation. So after that, you you get uh, three answers. That is y equals zero, one, or minus one, and then very easily you solve it back. You get this all three critical points, and and then you do the second derivative uh, d test uh, in terms of the, with respect to x and y. So you get um, minus six x two and minus six y two. Um, also, you do the functions uh, with respect to y, then you get this two, and then you do the uh, Hessian matrix to get the equation for the determinant. So um, some of us, uh, some of you guys use the, just use the second D test, uh, it's fine to in, uh, as long as you get this uh, equation. And afterwards, you just do the math part, you sub all the critical points into this equation. And you know that, um, for example, in x, y equals to 0, 0, that is the determinant is, my, uh, is smaller than 0. And that's why it is a settle point. And in the case of minus 1 and 1, because both of them are larger than 0, and at the same time, the f1, x, x is smaller than 0. So these two are the local maximum. So move on to the second question. We do the same trick again. And that is, uh, first of all, you do the D test uh, in respect to, with respect to X and Y and get these two functions and then set to zero. And then, then you know that uh, X equals Y equals zero. So this one, we only, in this, in this case, we only have, uh, one critical point, and then again you do second de uh, derivative test. You get this um, the Hessian Hessian matrix, and then sub it back. You know, zero. however, this time we know that the determinant is equal to zero, so the second derivative test is inconclusive. So after some of you guys. Um, just stop here, but this is not enough. So you have to find some explanation to to determine the nature of the um, the, the critical point. So so you may know that um, this equation is always non-negative, and that is um, this function is always larger or equal to zero for all x y values. So in other words, this one is a local minimum and also is a global minimum. So after discussing homework four, uh, I will give some examples on triple integration. So before giving specific examples, I would like to uh, uh, review some basic uh, applications of using triple integrals. So we often use uh, triple integrals to eval to do evaluation of uh, of uh, volume or mass over a solid region D. So in general cases, there will be a continuous uh, function f on the solid region D, and the region it is defined by the limits of x, y, and z. And generally, x uh, will uh, in a specific region, and y and z maybe, and y is a function of x, and z is a function of x and y. So when we do uh, the triple integration, of uh, the function f of x, y, and z dv over this region, the outermost uh, integral will be respected to uh, x. So the, the limit is a and b. Then uh, 
the intermediate uh, integral will be y, which is a function of x, and then the innermost one is z, uh, it's a function of x and y. So if we can uh, get this expression on the problems, then we can solve it a layer by layer. Start from the innermost one to uh, the outermost one. This is a, a general idea of solving this kind of problems. To warm up, I give the uh, example one, which is very simple. We don't need to uh, change the order of integration because this function is 6xyz. Uh, that's uh, very easy to integrate. So let's get started in the order in which it is presented. Uh, first, the integral is uh, with respect to y. And uh, so just keep our outer two integrals stay the same. The, we integrate uh, 6xyz uh, with respect to 2y. Then we uh, get 3xy squared z. Then we plug, uh, plug in uh, 0 and 1 and substrate. Then we will get uh, 3xz. Then we will integrate a 3xz with respect to 2x. Then we get uh, this. And finally, it's, uh, uh, we get uh, uh, 9 over 2z dz. Then plug in uh, uh, negative 3 and 1, we get the final number. So this is a very a very easy sample. So that's the second example. Uh, now we have the function of f uh, of x y z equals to uh, twelve x y z, and we want to find the average value of that function over the solid region of the uh, this picture. Uh, so we need to set up a triple integral. We would like to slice with respect to z first. We draw a line straight down uh, through the region. So no matter where the line is uh, positioned, see here, th this is the surface on the top of the region. Uh, so the, the, the plane is uh, 2x plus 3y plus uh, uh, 6z equals to 12. So we can get the, uh, the expression of z, which equals to uh, 12 uh, minus 2x minus 3y and divided by 6. So no matter the line lies, uh, the top of the region is uh, z and the bottom of the uh, Z region is always uh, start from zero. So we can get the innermost uh, integral of uh, respect to Z, it's this. Then we are going to set up a double integral over the region R. And we also need to divide it by the volume of the solid region to get the uh, mean value. Then so that we need to draw a picture of the projection of the projection. So it's going to be a, a triangle. This uh, vertex is uh, will be zero uh, com four, and this vertex will be. Uh, uh, 6 and uh, comma 0. So wait, it's easy to find the equation of the line 
uh, we are looking for is y e uh, th 2x uh, plus 3y equals to 12. So y equals to negative uh, 2 over 3x plus 4. And again in this uh, triangular region here, uh, now to set up our double integral, our inclination is to slice it. Uh, the bottom of the slice uh, uh, at y equals to 0 and the top of the slice uh, at y equals to negative uh, 2 over 3x plus 4. Then the outermost uh, integral will be uh, the minimum x value is 0 and the top value is 6. So, uh, so the integral uh, integrals will be dz, dy, and dx. Now we get the expression. Then we need to do a, a calculation. Oh, sorry. Uh, and we need to uh, find the volume of the uh, solid region. We find it, the shape is a pyramid. So the volume of this pyramid is uh, one third times uh, the base times the height. So this is the uh, calculation process. I won't go details here. You can do it after class. So the former two examples are in Cartesian coordinate systems. So, but in some cases we need to do integration in cylindrical coordinates. It, it will be more uh, easy. So let's first of all review the uh, definition of cylindrical coordinates. It uh, represents a point P, uh, like this point. And it was defined by all the, the triple parameters R, theta, and Z. So if we uh, assume R always uh, above or equals to zero in the following uh, content, so X will uh, equals to R times cosine theta, Y equals to R times sine theta, Z will equals to the Z. So a uh, r square will equals to x square plus y square and uh, tangent theta will equals to y over x. So if we do uh, integration in the uh, cylindrical uh, coordinates, the volume element will be dv equals to r times uh, dr, d theta, and dz. Sometimes the question will give you the uh, function in the uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates, but uh, we need to transform into the cylindrical coordinates to do it. Now let's see the third example. We need to ev evaluate the triple integration of the function to x squared plus z squared uh, over the region omega. So omega is the solid uh, region that lies above the uh, paraboloid and uh, below the sphere. So the boundary of this solid region is a sphere and the uh, paraboloid. So it's easy to find the answer in the cylindrical system. In the cylindrical uh, coordinates, we have three parameters, uh, theta, r, and z. So r, since r squared equals to x squared plus y squared, so we can get the uh, cylindrical equation of this square is r squared plus z squared equals to 2, and the, the parabola is r squared equals to z. So next, we need to find the uh, intersection of the two surfaces. 
So when they have the same z, uh, they will uh, have the uh, intersection. So z in the sphere, z equals to uh, root 2 minus r squared. And in the parabola, it, uh, block, it's uh, r squared. So uh, solve this equation, we get that z equals to r squared equals to 1. So in the intersection projection, uh, we can see that the uh, the range of c theta is from 0 to 2 pi, and r uh, is uh, from 0 to 1. And uh, in the solid region, the uh, range of z is uh, always from the uh, the uh, parabola is uh, r square and uh, to the uh, sphere uh, is uh, root 2 minus r square. So uh, after that, we can uh, translate the the question into the cylindrical system. So we can get this uh, equation. We also need to transform the uh, this function to cylindrical system. So as uh, since x equals to r uh, dot uh, cosine theta. So yeah, we get this, and uh, we also need to when we do integration, uh, we also to need to times r to do the uh, coordinates transform. Uh, so after getting the uh, final equation, uh, we need to solve it uh, step by step. So first of all, the innermost integral is with respect to, to z. So uh, we integrate the uh, r times uh, 2 r squared cosine theta squared plus z squared, we can get this. Then we will uh, plug in uh, r squared and uh, root 2 plus r squared into this function. Uh, then, then we will also, then we will do the integration with respect to, to r and the theta. So you can do the uh, steps after the tutorial and check your answer. So this is not a uh, difficult equation, but it's very complicated. So you need to be very careful. So this is a example on a cylindrical coordinates. Then I would like to give an example on line integrals of vector field, and I will try my best to make it clear for you. Uh, again, before giving specific examples, I would like to uh, review some the basic concept of line integrals of the vector field. Uh, let's imagine we have a force field f of x, y, z, uh, which equals to f of r equals to m x, y, z in the i direction plus n of x, y, z in the j direction plus p of x, y, z in the k direction. So the work done by this force field in moving an object along a smooth curve C, uh, C maybe in the space, uh, and uh, C is uh, of given by the RT, which is a factor of uh, XT, YT, and ZT. Then T is uh, limited from A to B. Then the work done is uh, the integra integration of f x y z times t x o x y z d s. T is the uh, unit tangent vector of the curve C. So the expression of the work will be uh, w equals to uh, uh, the integ in integration of f 
times dr. And uh, dr equals to r prime t dt. So we can get the expression of the work w equals to uh, uh, this. So that's the uh, basic definition of the land in integration of vector field. And there are six possible ways to uh, represent the work done integrals. Uh, we can choose the most appropriate one to solve our problem. Now let's see uh, an example. The vector field that we are going to start out with is z in the i direction minus y in the j direction minus x in the k direction. That's the vector field. Then I'm going to have a, a, a path interact with it. So I'm then I, I'm going to integrate over the path. The path is given by r sub t. Uh, it's a vector of, of 5 in the i direction, uh, minus sine t in the j direction, minus cosine t in the k direction. So all the, uh, all, all the a function is uh, of t. So the 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 range of t is from zero to uh, pi over four. Now we have the uh, f uh, of x y z is the vector field. We need to integrate uh, over the path r. So we can uh, write the uh, line integral of the uh, vector field into this fun this uh, this form so next we need to find xt yt and zt so it's easy that uh, xt equals to 5 and the yt equals to minus sine t uh, zt equals to uh, uh, minus cosine t then after that, we can get the uh, dr d over dt. dr over dt is uh, negative cosine t in the direction of j uh, plus sine t in the direction of k. Then we can uh, plug in uh, xt, yt, zt into the function fx, yz. Then we get that uh, it's uh, uh, z equals to uh, negative cosine t in the i direction, then uh, plus sine t in the j direction minus 5 in the k direction. Next, so this expression, uh, we can plug our uh, f, x, d, y, t, z, t, and uh, dr over dt into this. We get this uh, integration. So the uh, the uh, limit of t is from 0 to pi over 4. Now we will do calculation uh, on the uh, long expression. Uh, since uh, these are two uh, vectors, when we do uh, i times j is 0, i times k is also is 0. So the only thing left is uh, sine t in the j direction times uh, negative cosine t in the di j direction and uh, negative 5 in the k direction times sine t in the k direction. So we get uh, negative sine t times cosine t minus 5 uh, sine t dt. Then we can, uh, there are two parts of this 
uh, this function. It's easy to to do integration of the uh, five sine t dt, but for the uh, negative sine t times cosine t, we can do a substitution. We let uh, u equals to sine t, so uh, du over dt is cosine t. So dt equals to uh, 1 over cosine t du. And uh, uh, since the uh, range of t is from 0 to uh, pi over 4, so the range of u is uh, from uh, sine 0 to sine uh, pi over 4 is from 0 to uh, root 2 over 2. Then uh, we come back to the uh, equation. So negative is also negative. Sine t will be u. Cosine t will keep the cosine t. And the dt will be uh, 1 over cosine t du. And the, the 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 limit of u is from zero to uh, from zero to uh, uh, root two over two. So the uh, the second part we just keep it, and it's uh, uh, easy to solve. Then we do subtraction. The the cosine t cosine t will uh, will be one. So uh, we can get the answer. The first part is uh, negative uh, one quarter, and uh, the second part is uh, uh, five times uh, square two over two and uh, minus two five. So this is the uh, uh, final answer. So in, in this uh, integration, we need to do a substitution to simplify the uh, an integration process. Uh, that's all of this uh, tutorial. We have discussed uh, some of the questions of uh, homework 4 and uh, some examples on triple integration and one sample on uh, line integral uh, in vector field. So uh, for some of the questions, I didn't give you the very detailed steps to get the final answer. You can do that after this tutorial. And if you have uh, further problems, please feel free to contact us. So I, I, I am Alisa, and you can also contact other two TAs. Thank you. And now if you have uh, questions about this tutorial you, you can since we still have some time you can type in your question in the uh, chat box i will try to uh, answer it